In this unforgettable crossover episode, it's like Hotel Hell collides with hoarders. Although not exactly. Meet our delusional inn-owner, known for hoarding everything under the sun, from eerie dolls to her beloved wicker baskets. She's turned her establishment into a thrift shop of her own, filling every nook and cranny with her personal belongings. You won't believe it, but she's even set up a makeshift bed in her office, making herself right at home. But the real shocker awaits in the kitchen, a place where you won't believe your eyes. And remember the infamous boiled hamburger? Well, it makes an appearance in this episode, adding a whole new level of grossness. And guess what this woman's name is? There's just one name for her. Nice to see you. Karen Townsend. Karen, good to see you. Karen? Of course that's her name. But that's not all. Karen has left a disturbing secret hiding within the rooms. It smells like there's crap all over the floor. Probably because there's crap on the floor. Little wonder this episode remains a fan favorite in Hotel Hell history. The burning question lingers. What fate befell this historic inn and its hoarding owner? Let's dive into the recap to find out. In 2015, Gordon Ramsay made his way to stay at the Towns Inn, located in the charming town of Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Nestled within the picturesque Harpers Ferry National Historic Park, this is a spot where the Shenandoah and Potomac rivers come together, creating a stunning natural spectacle. The location is steeped in history, largely due to its vital role in the Civil War and its connection to John Brown's famous raid. The town's significance is unmistakable, with its past deeply intertwined with the nation's. Furthermore, Harper's Ferry finds itself nestled right on the border of Maryland and within close proximity to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. This inn is under the ownership of Jason and Anna, who saw it as an investment opportunity back in 2007. But there's more to the story. They also had another motive, to keep Jason's mother, Karen Townsend, occupied in her retirement years. After retiring from her teaching career, Karen had a desire to stay active, and the inn seemed like the perfect project. However, what Gordon soon discovers is that Karen has transformed the inn into her personal haven, treating it more like a home than a business. She's even taken to sleeping in her office, blurring the lines between personal and professional life. Her son, Jason, faces a dilemma. He's torn between his mother's well-being and the future of the hotel. He must decide whether she should step away from the hotel's operations or if they should consider selling it. As Gordon steps into the inn, he's met with a disheartening sight. Clutter everywhere, hats and weird-looking dolls for sale, and shelves filled with expired loaves of bread. It's clear that things have been this way for quite some time. The staff, when approached by Gordon, reveals that the hotel's struggles have persisted over an extended period. The stage is set for Gordon Ramsay to work his magic, but the challenges ahead are no small feat. Jason's absence in overseeing things at the hotel becomes evident. Gordon is taken to his room, but along the way, he stumbles upon a collection of wicker baskets for sale. These baskets have price labels ranging from $1 to $30, but they are in a sorry state, covered in dust and bugs. As Gordon prepares to stay in the Potomac Room, which is named after the local river, he is met with disappointment. The room is a far cry from what one would expect. The ceiling is cracked, the curtains are falling down due to a too short pull, and, to add to the dismay, the cupboard containing the owner's clothes is locked, which means Gordon has nowhere to hang his clothes up. Gordon doesn't hesitate to ask for the key, but Karen flat out refuses to give it to him. After a bit of negotiation, she reluctantly agrees to open the cupboard and show Gordon what's inside. To everyone's surprise, Gordon decides to take matters into his own hands. He proceeds to remove half of Karen's clothes from the room and gets a staff member to take them to her office, placing them on her bed. After clearing out his room, Gordon builds up quite an appetite. He decides to head down to the restaurant. He places an order for mac and cheese, fiesta stew, and trout. But it's far from what he expected. The mac and cheese has been carelessly microwaved, the trout is swimming in water, and the stew tastes like it was cooked days ago. As Gordon explores the restaurant, he encounters Sarah, a well-meaning friend of the family. While Sarah isn't officially employed, she's taking charge and bossing the staff around, which isn't sitting well with the team. Meanwhile, Karen stays in her office, letting Sarah run the show. What's truly bizarre in this episode is the unconventional renovations. The kitchen wall is adorned with a strange mural, and there's an attempt to fix the wall in Gordon's room with paint and Brillo pads, which have rotted the wall. After that, Gordon's culinary venture takes him into the kitchen, where he discovers a shocking secret. The cooks are boiling hamburgers. 
which are pre-cooked in the oven first for 20 minutes, frozen, and then reheated in the boiling water. Unbelievable. When Gordon confronts Karen about this appalling cooking method, she shockingly denies there is a problem. To prove the point, Gordon brings a customer who ordered the burger into the kitchen. The customer is shocked by the way the burger was prepared. The truth about the food's origin is revealed to the customers, including a grocery store rotisserie chicken that's been sitting around for six months, frozen, and then reheated. It's not a pretty picture. In the end, Gordon has seen enough. He takes action and shuts down the kitchen. Karen doesn't back down despite Gordon's scathing critique. Undeterred, he continues his inspection of the kitchen, determined to uncover more issues. As he peeks into the walk-in, he's greeted by a grim sight. Fries are soaking in dirty water, and fish is left in a pool of blood. It's a nauseating scene that makes your stomach churn. Karen, in a desperate plea, explains to Gordon that her mounting debt prevents her from replacing the broken equipment, further adding to the restaurant's woes. Gordon, armed with a bacteria testing kit, decides to put the cleanliness of the hotel to the test. He starts with his very own room. The results are shocking. The reading on Gordon's hotel room floor registers a jaw-dropping 803, while an acceptable reading should be around 30. It's a glaring indication of the severe hygiene issues plaguing the establishment. Once more, Karen responds to the situation as she often does by pointing the blame at her guests. She claims that the place gets dirty because they have many bikers, bicyclists, and hikers visiting. If that wasn't bad enough, then what happened next truly shocked Hotel Hell fans. In a scene that will go down in infamy. It smells like there's crap all over the floor. Probably because there's crap on the floor. Who left the crap on the floor? You were in the bathroom and I think you had an accident on the floor, on the mat. Oh my god. I have had diarrhea, but it doesn't happen very often. Fed up with Karen's excuse blaming regarding the hotel's state, Gordon decides it's time to make his exit. Karen, in a heartfelt moment, breaks down in tears and admits she can no longer deny the problems. She's finally ready to accept Gordon's help. Taking charge, Gordon instructs Karen to pack her things, signaling that she won't be sleeping in the office any longer. It's a much needed change. Later on, Jason meets with Gordon. In a surprising and compassionate gesture, Gordon tells Jason that he's found a home for Karen and even offers to cover her rent for the first two months. It's an incredibly generous act on Gordon Ramsay's part, aimed at providing Karen with some breathing space to reflect on her current situation. After Karen finally agrees to relocate, Gordon Ramsay and his expert team swing into action, packing up all of her belongings and clearing them out of the hotel. With the clutter gone, the Hotel Hell team transforms Gordon's room into a sleek and contemporary space, a trademark of their turnaround process. Consistent with their approach, they didn't renovate all the rooms, focusing their efforts on just a select few to maximize impact. In addition to room upgrades, the restaurant undergoes a transformation too, featuring a simplified and improved menu. Gordon, ensuring Karen's commitment to change, persuades her to make a promise, to take a break and spend quality time with her family. Now, as the dust settles, the question remains. Was the Towns in Hotel episode a resounding success? What happened to Karen? Karen briefly left her office slash bedroom with the Towns in and moved to a cottage rented by the show, which she found impractical. Eventually, she found herself living back at the Towns in again. She mentioned, I was constantly driving back and forth from the cottage to help outside of business hours, pointing out the challenges of Ramsey's 9 to 5 schedule for her small staff. She also found herself reverting to her habit of always being available to customers and living on site. Examining the reviews on TripAdvisor just before Gordon Ramsay's visit, specifically prior to November 2015, it becomes evident that many of the negative reviews already touched on the issues that Gordon highlighted in the episode. These concerns predominantly revolved around unsanitary conditions, subpar customer service, and disappointing quality of restaurant food. It's clear that the problems were long-standing and not new revelations brought forth by Ramsey's visit. Following Ramsey's visit, restaurant reviews began to show improvement, with customers expressing favor for the revamped menu, especially the new and enhanced fresh hamburgers. However, it seems that Karen encountered challenges in maintaining adequate staffing for the restaurant. Some reviews took a negative turn regarding the service, primarily criticizing its slow pace. She also took issue with some of the Hotel Hell experience. Everything was not helpful. We really tried to do the Ramsey menu that November, but it wasn't working well. He didn't train the chefs how to cook his fancy dinners, Townsend said. 
Karen said she didn't think Ramsey gave them enough advice. Everything he knew, I knew 10 things more, she said. It's been a challenge. Karen fired the cooks featured on the episode not long after and brought in a new executive chef, Christian Evans. Evans, referred to as a world-class chef by Karen, completely overhauled the kitchen in the spring of 2016, just before the episode aired. So basically everything Ramsey did was removed, she explained. They basically gutted the place and everything was removed. Two years later in 2018, Karen said upon reflection, Ramsey came and made unhelpful changes, even though we hired top tier chef Christian Evans, who had been the executive sous chef for 13 restaurants at Hollywood Casino nearby Charlestown, and spent a fortune having Chef Christian redesign the kitchen and put together a gourmet menu. Bistro 1840 opened in April 2016 and has been closed since November 2017 because not enough diners were willing and able to pay gourmet prices that would sustain the restaurant year-round. Apparently, a burger that's not boiled is considered gourmet. Since then, microwave chicken and cheap lunch meat from the grocery store have replaced any of the gourmet food. It's worth noting that the restaurant aspect has been replaced by a cafe serving lighter dishes. All in all, Karen said she has seen no positive results from Hotel Hell and is still dissatisfied with Ramsey's treatment of her and her business. In October 2018, a review pointed out problems with the hotel like hygiene issues and the absence of dining choices at the time as Bistro 1840 was shut down. The reviewer wasn't pleased with the limited amenities considering the high cost. The reviewer also mentioned that, at that time, most of the changes Gordon Ramsay implemented no longer exist. Karen personally responded to this reviewer. You may find the rest of the story regarding the November 2015 visit to the inn by Gordon Ramsay interesting. The Townsend family lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in our effort to follow Chef Ramsay's advice. She then had this to say about Gordon. I'm 69 years old and I have never met anyone whom I dislike and disrespect more than Gordon Ramsay. His suggestions and actions were inappropriate and costly. The hotel has received mixed, but generally okay reviews. It holds a 4-star rating on TripAdvisor, which is decent, but not exceptional. Additionally, it has a 3.9-star rating on Google reviews, falling in a similar range. For instance, consider this review saying not enough has been done to the property to give it modern amenities. The renovations are uneven and underfunded. This observation can be attributed to the fact that Gordon Ramsay and Hotel Hell only renovated a portion of the rooms. Therefore, guest experiences can vary between newly refurbished rooms and older ones. It's worth noting that a significant number of guests seem to expect to stay in rooms that Gordon renovated, even though those rooms constitute only a small fraction of the available accommodations. You can really see the difference between the rooms Gordon renovated and ones that were not. The official website offers room rates starting at $80 per night, with prices going up to $200 per night for the 1820 suite. If you specifically desire the Potomac room where Gordon Ramsay stayed, the current rate for that room is $145 per night. Was this a Hotel Hell success story or not? In 2023, the Towns Inn is still up and running, continuing under the management of Karen. As mentioned, the restaurant aspect has been replaced by a cafe serving lighter dishes. This arrangement seems to suit Karen quite nicely. Managing a seven-bedroom inn is one task, while running a restaurant is a whole different challenge. Juggling both successfully can be quite tough, so focusing more on the inn appears to be a wise move in my opinion. While Karen didn't like how Hotel Hell went, it seems to be the period immediately after the episode aired that became a true ordeal for Karen and her family, as they invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in restaurant renovations, only to see it close within a year and a half. On the bright side, recent reviews for the town's inn have been largely positive in recent years. Quality has shown a consistent upward trend, with many reviewers specifically praising Karen for her efforts. The Inn even received TripAdvisor's Traveler's Choice Award for 2023. As for whether it's a success or not, it's a bit challenging to determine without access to the complete financials of the business. However, if Karen is content with the town's Inn now and has discovered a winning formula that suits her, then it could be considered a success from her perspective. Nonetheless, the full picture remains elusive.